Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Nikki Haley just let loose on false reports with two words that put the media to shame. United Nations Ambassador Nikki Haley just got on ABC's This Week to blast the media for reports that she and Secretary of State Rex Tillerson are feuding over President Trump's decision to decertify Iran. Interviewer George Stephanopoulos referenced a Politico report quoting an anonymous White House official that stated that the tension between Haley and Tillerson was reaching World War III levels. The report claims that Nikki Haley supported decertification while Tirson was extremely opposed to the measure and resentful of Haley for supporting it. Haley set the record straight with two words dramatic and ridiculous. That's so dramatic. That's so ridiculous. No. I think what you have is sometimes Secretary Tirson and I have different opinions, but when we come into the NSC, National Security Council, everybody has different opinions. She continued. I have my relationship with Secretary Tirson or General Mattis, or anyone else, it's all a great relationship because we are all looking out for the best interest of America. The mainstream media seems to be trying to divide our leaders and loosen the American people's faith in their talents and abilities. It is a shame that Trump's highest level officials have to constantly go to reporters to refute false stories. But every time they do, the media loses a little bit more credibility and will hopefully eventually become more honest. H.T. The Hill Trump just showed up in D.C., and immediately everyone noticed one new thing on him. The press has been constantly going after our president. It's so sad. It's not rad. But reporters have now noticed something amazing about our president now. Sources are now saying that it's the happiest they have seen him since the election. God bless him. Trump deserves to feel good. He's worked his butt off to make the economy killer. The stock market has increased by $5.2 trillion since the election. It has also reached the lowest unemployment rates in 16 years, according to Trump. Share this to send good energy to our president. Let's make this go viral by spreading it everywhere and commenting Go Trump Go! He deserves it. Julian Assange just unleashed a hellish surprise on Hillary Clinton. This is huge. Julian Assange just attacked Hillary Clinton this Sunday. Julian Assange tweeted out something mysterious about Hillary Clinton that has people guessing that something is coming for Hillary Clinton. Julian Assange then pointed out the campaign to claim that WikiLeaks is a Russian-owned institution. He pointed out that even Barack Obama and several Obama officials said that WikiLeaks and Russia were not tied. Then he just dropped a bombshell on Hillary Clinton. Share this if you agree with Julian that Hillary Clinton is creepy. Phew. That's a Sunday night burn if anyone's ever seen one. Trump just spotted on golf course with someone that has reporters everywhere freaking out. Kentucky Senator Rand Paul praised President Donald Trump on his move with taxes and health care after the president crushed him in a round of golf this Saturday as reported by Nation One News. The president never loses, didn't you know? Paul told reporters after the game. The president and his partner beat myself and my partner by three holes. He's a little better golfer than I am, admittedly, but we had a good time. I've been very excited about the president's tax plan from the very beginning, when he put out a 15% corporate tax cut, he said. Now, obviously, trying to say 20%. I just want to make sure we realize we're competing with the rest of the world." Paul then said that he supports Trump's executive order to take down Obamacare and make it possible for individuals to join together through national health plans. 
I'm really excited about letting people buy across state lines, Paul said. The interesting thing about this is half of the people in our country get their insurance through the Employee Retirement Income Security Act already. So Amazon, Pepsi, Coke, Microsoft, MGM, big companies all get their insurance across state lines through ERISA plans. Now we're going to let individuals get the same thing. Share this if you if you are glad that Trump will single-handedly fix Obamacare. Thanks for reading. After Trump announced his Iran deal, Bibi Netanyahu just got on TV and said something incredible. American relations with Israel have improved tremendously under President Trump. Those improvements were never more apparent than on Sunday, two days after President Trump announced his new Iran policy. The president outlined in an address that, while he would not withdraw from the 2015 nuclear deal with Iran, he would decertify Iran's compliance with the deal and impose sanctions on Iran's Revolutionary Guard. An interview with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was aired on CBS's Face the Nation on Sunday in which the Prime Minister praised President Trump's announcement, saying, I think the President was very courageous in saying, I'm not going to kick this kid down the road. I'm not going to say, well, it's going to be on somebody else's watch. I'm going to stop this from happening." He continued, highlighting exactly what's at stake if Iran gets nuclear weapons. We cannot allow Iran, the world's foremost terrorist regime, that hangs gays, kills protesters, jails journalists, and foments aggression throughout the region and the world. We cannot allow this rogue regime 30 times the size of North Korea's economy to have a nuclear arsenal. It's a very brave decision and I think it's the right decision for the world. Israel is one of our closest allies and the only true democracy in the Middle East. It's great to have a president who cherishes and protects that friendship and makes the Israel, and the world, a safer place. H.T. The Hill Kellyanne Conway just revealed what she secretly does every day at the White House. White House Counselor Kellyanne Conway spoke about her faith during an interview at the Value Voters Summit on Friday. Conway is a strong Catholic and told interviewer Tony Perkins, president of the Family Research Council, that her faith is the bedrock of her life, saying, I don't know how I could do any of this without my faith. And that's because it's a bedrock because when you are raised in a faith-centric household you realize from the very beginning that there is always something bigger and better than you. She continued. That sort of humility is an important attribute to take to any position that has such great gravity and responsibility as I feel ours do in the White House. Conway spoke about how happy she is to serve her country, and how being a Christian informs her service. I feel incredibly privileged and blessed to serve my country in this position, and if I approach it that way, I'm approaching it as a woman of faith, and somebody who knows that for every time there is a season, and God places us at certain places in certain times in our life." Conway added that she begins each morning in the White House with a prayer. I first of all say a prayer as I walk in because every day I ask the Lord to bless everyone who works in the building, everyone in the country everyone who that building represents across the country, for our safety and our security, our understanding, wisdom. Kellyanne Conway is a lovely speaker, and hearing her talk about her faith is nothing short of inspiring. It is great to see godly people in the White House serving us every day. President Trump sure knows how to pick a great team. Share it out if you agree with Kellyanne Conway's message of faith and service. H.T. Town Hall When college tries to cancel anthem, these patriotic players do something amazing. The NFL is a mess. Players are disrespecting our flag and country, ratings are in the toilet, and public perception of the league is at all-time lows. But there are still good people in the game. 
when college football players in Hartford, Connecticut got word that the anthem would be canceled, they made a move that will make Americans proud. They joined their fans and sang the national anthem a cappella. The anthem was canceled due to technical difficulties, according to Fox News. But those failures allowed these Americans to show how devoted they are to our flag. It was a fantastic display of unity and patriotism and gave everyone in the crowd, the teams, and hopefully those who watch the video, chills of hope for a better United States of America and happiness to see us as a society beginning to heal, despite the polarization we see among the citizens and our politicians, player Ethan Sirachi said. So while millionaire professional athletes are kneeling, these players are singing. Comment USA. And share if you love our anthem. These Americans definitely do. After Senator Bob Corker called him castrated, Rex Tyson looked into the camera and made him cry. Secretary of State Rex Tyson just ripped Senator Bob Corker, RTN, for his bizarre comments earlier this week saying that President Trump had castrated the secretary. When Tyson was asked about the comment on CNN's State of the Union Sunday morning, he drawing replied, I checked, I'm fully intact. Boom. As Corker just found out, no one can put you on a slow burn like Rex Tyson. Orker had excoriated the president over his foreign policy with North Korea in an interview with Washington Post, saying, You cannot publicly castrate your own Secretary of State without giving yourself that binary choice. The tweets, yes, you raise tension in the region, and, it's very irresponsible. But it's the first part that I am most exercised about. Corker was referring to a news conference in Beijing in which Rex Tyson said the United States had attempted to start communication with North Korea about its nuclear program, to no avail. The next day President Trump tweeted that Tyson was wasting his time attempting to talk to North Korea. Tyson leapt to the president's defense, however, saying that President Trump just has an unusual style of communicating that people are not used to because it is so radical. The last thing anybody likes to do in this town is make a decision, he said. Because when you make a decision, you're suddenly accountable for that decision. I am fully committed to his objectives, I agree with his objects, I agree with what he's trying to do. How he wants to use his own skills, tactically to push things towards change, I'm here to help him. Despite what the media and Reno's like Corker want us to believe, the president's cabinet is stronger than ever. H.T. The Hill